within that same flood event, I showed you the copper dam overtopping. Uh, we did, as, as Daryl mentioned, we did experience a loss of the ability to control one of the gates at Lake Placid. Uh, here's some aerial footage provided uh, by the city of Seguin that shows just this initial area, this area just upstream of the dam, kind of what that lower water surface looks like. So, you know, during the flood event, uh, we had one of the gates filling water, and when the, con when the operator went to lower the second gate, uh, we've had issues with that gate hanging up at a certain spot. Um, that gate did, did hang up as they continued to drain water out from under it to try to lower it. It finally lost control and over the course of a few seconds went, went fully flat. Um, when the operators made an attempt to raise the gate, it could only get up to a certain point before it would stick and couldn't go up any further. So as the, as the reservoir levels continued to decline, they were only able to get it up less and less until finally the gate was, was left flat. Uh, the following day, the, the intake valve that allows the gate to raise was left open all night and there was no response from it. Um, so it took several days for us to really be able to perform any effective type of inspection while we had to wait for the river flows to decline. Uh, that was performed yesterday, finally. So the first thing that was done, these, these shots show you uh, some images of the, this is the control valve on the intake side of the gate. Uh, opening, this, opening this valve is what allows water to flow into the gate and raise it. So we're able to go in there and confirm there were no issues with that valve itself and no river mud blocking that inflow. So I mean, we, we're confident that water is getting to the gate. So the issue would not be with the controls, it would be with the gate itself. Uh, you can see the significant accumulation of zebra mussels here. I don't believe that to have any relationship to the problem. Just wanted to point that out to you, that there's a lot of zebras accumulating inside of Placid. Um, we were able to go inside the gate and perform inspections, and what you're seeing here is the bottom of the locking bars that are on the upstream gate leaf. And these are supposed to be fully coated in that red paint, and um, these were installed fairly recently. You can see that there's some scraping going on. on these are the locking bars on kind of the left side of the gate, and there's some significant scraping, especially on this number three bar all the way down. Uh, showing that the upstream and downstream gate leaves are making contact, which is not supposed to occur. If you go outside the gate and look at that same location, you can visibly see, if you look across, across these boards and look at the water level on the gate, you can visibly see the bowing of that upstream gate leaf. Um, we've had surveyors out there yesterday, and they confirmed this is about a two-inch bow across a 16-foot section of gate, which may not sound significant, but structurally that could be, could be very significant. And so, to give you an idea of what you're really looking at there, I mean, here's, here's a cross-section of the gate. Um, those locking bars I was showing you photos of that are scraping, that's this member right here. This shows what it looks like in the, in the locked-out position. And so, as that gate's traveling, it's making contact with this downstream side, which is not, not supposed to occur. And that bowing across the gate is, is happening there. So, essentially, we've got the upstream member on the portion of the gate bowed out like this. So, you know, steel is designed to flex when it gets loaded. That is part of normal steel design. But once it gets to the point of permanent, permanent deflection, um, it's really lost some of its structural strength potentially. We currently have uh, our engineers, Black and Beach, performing some structural calculations to see, you know, at what point has that steel yielded? What concerns might we have with the structural strength here? And any time you do that inside a structure and weaken one area, it has a ripple effect and can, can go across all the other members across the gate. So until we have time to make those really complicated analysis, we're not recommending any further efforts to attempt to raise the gate until we're confident that it's structurally sound. And we're underway with those efforts right now. So this is what the gate looked like yesterday, dewatered during construction in the down position. And until we're able to complete that analysis, this is what it's going to continue to stay in this position. Before I move on from that, any, any questions from the board? Looking at the design of McQueenie and Placid, which are tracking the same <coughs> schedule, um, our milestone was to complete design in September, and we did hit that milestone. The, the design has been final, minus, minus any comments from the reviewing agencies. Uh, we got that submittal into TCQ, Texas Water Development Board, and the Army Corps for review. We've already got the 
not the approval letter, but comments back from TCQ saying all we need is a signed and sealed set and we're, we're satisfied. So TCQ comments have been addressed. Uh, the Water Development Board is reviewing the contract for compliance with the SRF loan, uh, but they cannot complete the review until uh, they get environmental clearance based on the Army Corps permit. And that's where we have run into some challenges I want to update you on. Uh, we followed a nationwide permitting process at Dunlap. Uh, the Corps, in their pre-application meeting, indicated they were not going to allow Jubilee to permit the project using the same strategy. Um, you know, our review of the Corps' guidance suggests to us that we should be able to use that, since it's the exact same type of impacts. But uh, the Corps' firm that we need to follow more of a, it's, I'll call it an abridged individual permit, it's a letter of permission process, but it's much more involved. Uh, the biggest impact to us is that nationwide permitting has a 45-day turnaround time. The letter of permission process has a goal of 120 days, but no defined timetable for turning around that permit. Um, so the only, you know, we really haven't received any justification for why we can't use the same process. The only the only information we've received is related to uh, Nathan briefed y'all either last board meeting or previously on a proposed listing of endangered mussels in Guadalupe. Uh, the Corps is the agency required to coordinate with all other federal agencies, including Fish and Wildlife. And so we have a we have a meeting coming up <coughs> this week to have a consultation with those agencies and see what type of investigations they might want to place upon upon the project to uh, to get the permit. So. That's one, one of the activities they've indicated may be a concern in this area, and we're, we're working through determining what that might mean for the project. So just looking all, if, if they were able to meet the 120-day goal, we had planned on bidding this project coming up next month in November. Uh, assuming the 120-day goal is met, that could slide the project potentially back as far as February, and if the goal is not met even, even further beyond that. So we're waiting to really get a little further and see what those schedule impacts look like. We wanted to give you all an update on where we stand there. 